Hello everyone and welcome to Learning with JGO. In this video, we shall be discussing a summary and a detailed stanza by stanza analysis of Maya Angelou's Cage Bird. I entreat you all to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and smash the bell icon to receive updates like this. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the poet's biography. Maya Angelou, whose original name was Margaret Annie Johnson, is an American poet born in the year 4th April. 1928. Maya, aside being a poet, was a dancer, a waitress, a singer, an activist, and a scholar. She was best known for a unique style of autobiographical writing. From an early age, Maya was known to have had enormous interest in writing, as she wrote a lot of poems, essays, and kept journals too. Her interest in literal arts, however, took a break as she sought to gain employment in some institutions. Her application for several jobs got rejected due to some reasons, including her race, as well as her association with communist ties. She would later further her education and undertake a series of odd jobs including dancing, singing and cooking so as to cater for herself. In the 1950s, Maya found encouragement for her literary talents in the Harlem Writers Guild. This guild put her in a better position to establish herself firmly in the literary arts industry. She published her first work. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings in 1969, an autobiography of her early life. She wrote many poetry volumes including Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water, For I Die, Now Sheba Sings the Song and I Shall Not Be Moved. Angelo wrote a lot of books and scripts for movies which gained her numerous accolades and awards. She died on May 28, 2014. The Cage Bird epitomizes the long-standing oppression of black lives in the United States of America. It takes us back to the early years of colonial rule, when most Africans were transported as slaves and to various European countries to provide labor for most especially plantations, owned by the whites. While many of the blacks worked under very harsh conditions, others who dared to desire for their freedom were subjected to very inhumane treatment that subsequently led to their deaths. The abolition of slavery did not bring an end to the woes and suffering of the African American. However, it continued and took different forms such as racial segregation, racial violence and injustices on the Afro-American people. Maya Angelou enables us to understand through the caged bird, the unimaginable physical, emotional and psychological cruelty the African American is subjected to and his desire to taste the freedom that he has never had. Cage Bird by Maya Angelou highlights the contrasting lives and experiences of two birds, one free, the other caged. The free bird represents the white American, whereas the caged bird represents the black American. The free bird is a symbol of freedom that the European, specifically the white American, possesses. This reflects the limitless opportunities available to the white American, who lives a life of choice and enjoys the best of things this world has to offer, and how much of it he can enjoy. The cage bird, on the other hand, is one held in captivity. It symbolizes all black Americans who have been oppressed in many unimaginable ways. It reveals to us how the freedom of the black American is curtailed due to his skin color. The poet uses cage bird to remind us about how black communities were marginalized in the early 18th and 19th century. The free bird, that is the white American, who had unlimited freedom and power, enacted laws during this period to segregate most things that were needed for comfortable livelihoods. They segregated everything ranging from schools, to residential areas, to employment opportunities, to jails and even cemeteries. The whites made it possible for the blacks not to enjoy the same opportunities that they had and so relegated the blacks to lower and inferior places of livelihoods. The whites found it difficult to coexist with the blacks because they believed they were not equal. In this poem, Maya Angelou brings to bear the efforts made by the caged bird, that is the African, to withstand the oppression and cruelty of the whites. She reveals to us the resilience of the blacks despite the injustice by the whites and how much they longed for their freedom. According to the poet, the caged bird is relentless. It has hope of getting out of bondage someday as it sings for its voice to be heard past the distant hills and beyond. The poem is divided into six stanzas. Let's take each stanza in the poem and have a sense of them. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind 
and flows downstream till the current ends, and dip its wings in the orange sun rays, and dares to claim the sky. The first stanza of the poem talks a lot about nature. There are images of nature in words such as wind, currents, sun rays, and the sky. The sky and sun rays, for instance, enable readers to appreciate the life of this bird in its natural habitat without any form of limitation. The poet commences the poem with a description of the life of a free bird in nature. The free bird lives on the back of the wind and is able to float downstream without any guide or direction in mind until the current ends. The action of this bird reveals to us the unrestricted and carefree lifestyle of the bird. The use of the word float in line 3 of the first stanza better explains how unrestricted the movement of the free bird is in its life. Imagine placing a piece of flat wood on the surface of a river. What happens? You realize the piece of wood floats effortlessly in any direction the river moves. This is how the free bird lives its life every day without limits. In this same line, we realize that the floating of the free bird downstream till the current end further suggests to us the unlimited time the free bird has. That is, the freedom it has to fly as long as it likes till the current end. Where do currents end? They end when a river meets the sea, or when any small body of water joins a larger body. We can deduce from this picture that the river represents a channel of opportunities the free bed enjoys, which leads it to a much greater and endless opportunities when the current ends. And there is to claim the sky. Here, we realize that the freedom enjoyed by the free bed gives it the audacity to claim the sky. The lack of restriction makes it believe that it has the right to claim ownership of something that does not belong to it. To the free bird, freedom means power. We can as well relate the idea of the free bird's claim of the sky to the capture of many African countries by the whites and how they exploited the black people, took ownership of their lands, resources and their very selves. Life is meant to be lived freely. But if it can be claimed by another being and manipulated and dictated, it shows the level of power imbued within the captor by virtue of merely being free. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. Maya Angelou begins the second stanza of the poem with the word but to prepare her readers for a contrast to what she said earlier. The life of another bird is being discussed here, the life of a caged bird. The poet talks about a bird that has been held in captivity. The first few lines talks about how difficult and frustrating the life of the caged bird is. It believes the idea of oppression, dictatorship and cruelty level upon the black American for being just who they are, black. The cage symbolizes the limitations of the bird. That is preventing it from doing what other free birds do. If that is not enough, this cage has been qualified as narrow by the poet. What this means is that, aside the physical limitations imposed on the bird, the narrowness of the cage further adds both psychological and emotional trauma to the bird's dilemma. Evidence of the psychological impact on the bird can be found in lines 10 to 11, when the bird can seldom see through his bars of rage. Bars of rage is used by the poet to describe how the uncomfortable and unfavorable conditions present in the cage has changed the bird's emotions. The bird is always in the mood of anger and that limits the bird's line of sight. In these same lines, we are made to understand how the blacks are unable to see the opportunities that lie before them and beyond due to the physical and emotional limitations produced by the cage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. The bird in the cage is not only held captive and denied of its freedom, but its wings are clipped and its feet are tied as well. This is to show that, even if the bird escapes or is freed from captivity, it wouldn't be able to do the basic and natural things other birds do such as flying or hopping. Similarly, blacks may be hypothetically living as free individuals without any physical form of limitation amongst the white today. They are certainly not free in the real world as they continue to face racial discrimination and racially motivated violence amongst others that still cripple their efforts to do important things in life. This makes the black American open his throat to sing. 
The song sung by the cage bird may allude the life of the poet herself, who was a singer and expressed her longing for freedom through music. The cage bird sings with a fearful thrill of things unknown, but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. The third stanza continues to enlighten us more on how the cage bird songs serve as important allusion in the poem. In the first two lines, the bird is described as singing with a fearful trill. This is an allusion to a house lives in the white man's land kept up their spirits through music during their work on plantations in the old days. Music was the only fuel that powered them to stay resilient and continue with their work even within the harsh conditions provided by their masters. They sang for things unknown to them such as freedom, hope for a better future and many other good things they yearn for but have never tasted. We can also understand from the cage best song that Music was a medium through which the blacks in the white man's environment preserved their culture and tradition. Most of them were denied basic education and so could not read or write anything about themselves, where they came from, the struggles they faced, and how they coped up with them. The tune of the Afro-American is heard on the distant hills. Their plea for freedom is heard by people in distant places. They may find progress every day in their quest for freedom no matter how small but their wings are clipped and their feet are tied. They can only sing much more beyond these hills and hope that the one most important thing they yearn for, which is freedom, will be attained. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. The poet in this stanza gives readers an insight as to what the free bird thinks about in a pool of unlimited choices. It thinks of another breeze, another opportunity to explore, another environment of satisfaction. Even though the free bird hears the cries of the cage bird through its songs, it does not get bothered about its plight. Instead, it moves around to different places that would give it the luxury it needs. And the trade winds off through the sighing trees alludes history of the African-American slave trade. Trade winds in the past helped in the sailing of ships from Europe to Africa into America. The whites explored with their ships places in mostly Africa for their natural and human resources and used them to develop themselves and their countries. They did so by using slaves to grow cash crops such as sugar and cotton. We will get to realize in the next line that even the fat worms on the beautifully decorated lawns enjoyed by the free bird has so much freedom than the cage bird. The fat worms can be thought of as the luxuries enjoyed by the whites and also as the products of the work and toil of most Africans sent to work as slaves on the plantations of wealthy owners. At the end of this stanza, the free bird Ria says that the sky belongs to it. This does not only show how opportunistic the free bird can be but also shows the level of greed it has to want more and demand more of the things that does not belong to it. It should be noted that the allusion of trade winds in this stanza is very important because it reminds us of how the freedoms of blacks such as the freedom to own property, the right to education and even freedom to name one's own children were taken away. But a cage bed on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. Here, the poet talks about the dreams of the Afro-American being dead and buried because it has been denied the right and freedom of exploring his talents and of pursuing his dreams. This stanza connotes how the black American through the experience of racial segregation is prevented from enjoying the facilities that can only develop him and help with the achievement of his dreams. The second line of the stanza paints a more frightening picture. The cries of the cage bird are described as shouts on the nightmare scream. This summarizes the pain and agony of the cage bird experiences. It cries to the extent that when people hear its cry, they think of it as having nightmares. Nightmares are uncomfortable experiences and so when its cries are perceived as one, it tells readers how scared it is all the time. Once again, music is the only antidote to this cry perceived as a nightmare scream. The songs of the cage bird does not give it freedom, 
but it gives it strength in the moment of pain, sorrow and weakness. It gives the cage bird resilience to endure all the hardships that surrounds it and also gives it hope that someday its voice will be heard beyond the hills, which may spark a dawn of a new era. When the cage bird opens up its throat to sing, it goes on to tell readers that this bird may be held in captivity, its wings may be clipped, and its feet may be tied, but its desire for freedom and a desire to express itself can never be curtailed. The cage bird has been subjected to enough pain already, and there is nothing that can prevent it from expressing its longing for freedom through songs. The cage bird sings with a fearful thrill of things unknown, but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hills, for the cage bird sings of freedom. The sixth and last stanza of the poem talks about the cage bird once again, much like the third stanza. The cage bird sings of things unknown to it, but still longed for. When the poet talks of unknown things, she talks about the freedom that the blacks haven't tasted before. She talks about the resurrection and fulfillment of dead dreams, and with the fearful trill of the bird's voice, its tune is heard on the distant hills. This demonstrates that, despite the hopelessness of the situation, it will continue to sing for its voice to be heard from afar. The repetition of the third stanza puts more emphasis on the fact that the cage bird wouldn't sing for a moment and just stop. It would continue to voice out its never-ending desire to taste freedom for as long as it is able to. It also demonstrates the resilience of this bird, which will not relent despite the monstrous treatment it receives all the time and will cope up with the situation by singing out loud for freedom. From the entire poem, almost every word in the free bird's life speaks of freedom. It talks of the luxuries of life it enjoys such as fat worms and the breeze. It simply lives life without any restriction. The cage bird on the other hand is always on the receiving end of cruelty and injustice which traps it. And when it sings for freedom to the hearing of the distant hills, its tune is heard only as background noise, but that wouldn't deter it. It will continue to open up its throat to sing for the freedom it has never tasted until its voice is heard beyond the distant hills.